Good morning and welcome to this worship experience with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church and Preschool in Phoenix, Arizona. Today is March 28th, 2021. Today is Palm Sunday and so we celebrate that glorious and victorious entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. We're thankful for all of those who have come together to help prepare a Holy Week prayer kit for all people. You are invited and encouraged to come by church, stop by, pick one up, and use it during, during this coming week. I'm sure it will be something that you and your entire family can use during this week that we call holy. I invite you now to join with me in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for this day, for it is truly a gift from you, a gift that comes to all of creation, us, our families, our neighbors, those throughout the entire world. Help us all to celebrate your presence with us. Lord, in this worship experience, we pray that your word will soften our hearts, open our minds, and soften our approach to one another. Grant to us, Lord, your peace, your hope, and your comfort this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's join together in worship.
The reading today is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 19 through 29. I'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. This is the word of life. The gospel for this Palm Sunday is from the gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside on the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, Why are, what are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. On this Palm Sunday, good morning and grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. I begin by posing a very simple question. Or maybe it's not a simple question. You decide. What do you want out of life? What do you want out of life? I can only answer for myself, and the list is long. Some of the things are basic and essential, including a long and healthy life, a healthy, connected family, friends who stand with me during good times and bad, enough money to live and pay the bills, a loving connection with God, that is evidenced daily. But there are also things on my list that aren't so essential, that are not so basic, including a Tesla, maybe one of those new trucks they have out this year, or to enter Costco without a face mask. I look forward to that day. Or attending a baseball game with 40,000 other people. I look forward to that day too or to go to New York City and see a Broadway play. I can't wait. A guy can dream. One Sunday morning, a huge crowd, a roaring crowd, a jubilant crowd lined the streets leading to Jerusalem to welcome Jesus and his merry band of followers. Every person in that crowd had dreams of the next few moments the next few years, for a lifetime, they had dreams. We know that some of them in the crowd that day, maybe most in the crowd that day, they wanted freedom. Freedom from the Roman occupation army that had settled and overtaken 
their land. Freedom from the harassment of religious leaders. Freedom from tax collectors. Israel, at this point, had not been a sovereign nation for 150 years. They wanted their country back. They were a huddled mass, yearning to be free. Other people wanted more miracles from Jesus. Certainly some in that crowd that day. He was the miracle man, and maybe they had sick people in their families or in their neighborhoods. Maybe they simply wanted to touch him, to feel the power, to feel young again. Maybe they were simply miracle junkies and couldn't get enough of this stuff, and they just wanted to be there for the next one. The sold-out religious leaders, well, they cheered too, perhaps for a different reason, because they wanted Jesus to make a mistake, something they could actually try him for so they could move him out of the way and exercise their own power. They had been plotting for this moment, and I bet they stood on the side lines of that road that day and hoped he would make a mistake. Then you have the disciples. They had gone out from uh, anonymity to rock stars, and they wanted this to continue. Yes, everyone in the crowd that day had dreams. Something that they wanted is they waved palm branches, and cheered, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They cheered until their voices were hoarse. And they chose that word, Hosanna, carefully. It's reserved for heroes, for great leaders, for the very rare person who is so far above and beyond that they have to be recognized. It'd be the same as receiving a medal of honor in the United States of America. The word Hosanna means save us now, and that's exactly what they expected Jesus to do. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's safe to say that Jesus, in this moment, is the most popular man in Jerusalem, if not all of Israel. Too bad he didn't ride into Jerusalem that day to win a popularity contest. You see, today is Sunday, but Friday is coming. On Sunday, the crowds cheered for him. On Friday, their cheers had changed to crucify him. Crucify him. On Sunday... They hailed him as a conquering king. On Friday, they mocked him as he was beaten. And they called him the king of the Jews. On Sunday, his disciples smiled and waved, happy to be along for the glorious ride. On Friday, they ran away and they hid On Sunday, he rode into town on a donkey. On Friday, he walked out of town carrying his own cross. On Sunday, they lifted him up as a prince. On Friday, they lifted him up on that cross. On Sunday, they shouted, Hosanna, save us now. On Friday, they mocked him as he hung there, and they shouted, Save yourself. On Sunday, he was full of life and energy as he entered Jerusalem, the city of kings. On Friday, he breathed his final breath. Why the change? It's simple, really. Jesus did not come to Jerusalem that day to give the crowds what they wanted. He came to give them what they needed. Their greatest need Our greatest need is to be embraced by the Savior of the world who loves us beyond all measure. Jesus didn't come to Jerusalem to win a popularity contest or to change the power balance between the Romans and the religious leaders and the tax collectors. 
He didn't come to put anybody in their place. He didn't come to heal until he dropped. He didn't come to make us rich or make us happy or to be our little buddy. The Savior of the world came and rode into Jerusalem. He lived and died as a human being to make it clear, crystal clear, that God is for us, that God loves us beyond everything else. He came to wipe away our sin so that we will be God's children forever. He came to defeat death once and for all so we will be God's children forever. He came to challenge us to live like he lived so our family and friends and co-workers and the people we meet at restaurants or Starbucks, our fellow Americans and everybody else in every country will know that God's amazing, mind-blowing, crazy, out-of-this-world love is for them. And they will be God's children forever. Jesus didn't come to give us what we want out of life. He came to give us what we need most. Jesus didn't come to sell something. Jesus came to be the Savior. There was once a terrible earthquake in the country of Armenia. And in one village, there's a story of a father who races to his son's school, only to find that the school is no longer standing. It is a pile of rubble. Other parents had arrived. They're clutching their hearts. They're crying out as they stand looking at what was once the place where their children laughed and learned. But this father, he refused to give up hope. As he looked at that pile of rubble, he began to dig. He rushed to the exact place where he thought his son would be, and he began to move those rocks one at a time until his strength left him. And then he rested and went back to work, and others joined him. Others called him crazy for even trying. It's too late, they said. They're all dead, but he kept going. They could not convince him to stop. He kept digging until he was the last one there. 36 hours after that earthquake, still digging, still calling out for his son. And then he pulled back one particular boulder and he called out and he heard a hoarse voice call back, Father. He screamed the boy's name, Armand. The child responded, Father. I told them, I told all the other kids trapped down here that you would come, that you would never abandon me, that you would never leave me. You did it. You saved us. I tell you that to tell you this. This is a particular story. But this scene of hope plays out all over the place in our lives and in our world. It's been playing out around the globe for 2,000 years. Hope delivered, love experienced, the de grip of death defeated forever. It's God's greatest masterpiece, and it's exactly what we need most. You see, today is Sunday, but Friday is coming. Yes, on Sunday, Jesus' light shone brightly. On Friday, that light was violently snuffed out for us, for the world. But that wasn't the end of the story. Stay tuned. Blessings on this amazing Palm Sunday to you and your family. Amen.
On this Palm Sunday, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and everyone in it. Eternal God, in Jesus you came among us as a suffering servant. Give us humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Surprise us, heal us, and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation always. Help us to be expectant as we await resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change grant relief from natural disasters, and nurture new growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they will not exploit their power, but use it to maintain justice, sustain soldiers and all those on battlefields, and protect them and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Be with us as you promise to be. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer, especially those still fighting COVID-19 and those living in fear of what the future holds. In this moment of silence, we lift up the names of those who are hurting and give them to you, knowing that you are the great physician, the great healer of every ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You called your followers to tend to Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors and all those who deal with those in grief. Lord, we pray that you will help us to be your hands, your feet, your voice and heart in this world. Taking care of those who need it. Offering listening ears to those who simply need companionship. And most of all, Lord, to give your love away freely. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Lord, for whatever else you can see that we need, teach us always to trust you and follow you and to believe that our next comeback is right around the corner. 
Give us faith to trust the promises that you have laid before us and with them to look for our next resurrection. We pray these things in Jesus' name and together we say, Amen. I invite you to join me now as we join our voices and hearts together with people in our community and around the world as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, our family prayer. So we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, please, bow your hearts to God to receive God's blessing in your life as together we go into God's world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord always look upon you with favor and fill your hearts with God's peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Together we say, Amen. my 
stay and sing no story so divine never was love dear king never was grief like thine this is my friend in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend I all my days could gladly spend Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And? We will.